Hello, and welcome to this edition of Yin Yoga on this beautiful Tuesday. Started kind of crummy outside, but it looks like the sun's coming out, so it's excellent. So for today's practice, um, we're going to try and get into most of the body. So I'm going to recommend to have a strap or a belt um, close by. We will actually start with that, so you can have that here. Blankets, bolsters, cushions. Um, whatever you like to have for the extra support. We will go into camel today, um, which is the back bend where we're on our knees. So if full camel is where you wanna go, but you know that you cannot reach your heels or your ankles in that one, you might wanna bring in a couple blocks um, so you don't have to reach as far. Um, there'll always be a modification as well for half or a modified camel. So let's go ahead and get into our practice. So we're just going to start in a nice tall sit or seat. So think about the ears, shoulders, and hips in alignment. Draw up from the pubic bone behind the navel, belly button in. Let's take a slight tuck in the chin. And you can close your eyes or keep that gaze cast down. And just notice the breath for a moment. New technology, just making sure it's nice and secure in there. Good. And as you turn into your practice, is there anywhere that you could soften? So is that softening a little bit more through the face, through the shoulders, the hips? Can you expand that rib cage on your inhale with a little bit more ease? Yeah. So we are gonna come into a different pranayama today. We're gonna go into alternate nostril breathing. So for that, kind of almost think about kind of like a hang 10 or you know, Star Trek, live long and prosper. Um, think we're going to close the right side with the um, right thumb. The left side will close with the right ring finger and um, pinky. The other two fingers, some people like to touch the third eye, some people don't. So it's whatever you're comfortable with, it doesn't really matter there. So let's take a big inhale to prepare. Exhaling it all out. Good, closing the right nostril, inhale left. Close left, open right, exhale. Inhale right, close right, open left, exhale. Inhale left, close left, open right, exhale. Inhale, close right, open left, exhale. Inhale, close left, open right, exhale. Inhale, close right, open left, exhale, and keep going for a few rounds here. Noticing maybe you have some unexpected unknown congestion on one side than the other. Good, we'll take one more round. Back inhaling left and release. So this is a good pratyama to calm the body and bring a little bit more balance to right and left side. We'll take the fingertips to the side, palms turning up, inhale, reach, reach, reach and lengthen nice and tall, touching palms together. Exhale, hands in the heart center. Creating an intention for your practice. What would you like to give, receive? Maybe you'd like to dedicate this practice to someone or something. So the one that I will give you if you wanna follow that one is balance. What does balance mean to you? And once you have that set, inhale, we'll take it up. Turning the palms away, growing taller from crown to tail as we take those arms down. Good, so from here, just get some big 
shoulder rolls here and just really exaggerate that move. So I just happen to be moving mine forward, but it doesn't really matter because we will do both directions. And then once you have come into this, maybe start to reverse that direction. Just do the opposite of where you went before. Good, it feels so good. And then from here, we're going to take our belt or our strap, whatever it is that you're using. Now remember, you can also use other things, um, dog leashes, um, different things will also work. So I'm gonna come um, pretty wide here, not my widest, but certainly wider than shoulder width apart. And I'm just gonna reach up and I'm gonna lift, 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 good. I'm gonna take this strap right behind my head. So I'm opening up the chest and shoulders a little bit, but I don't wanna pop my chest forward. So to give you a side view of what I mean, again, you wanna still think about as much as possible, ear, shoulders and hips in alignment. So when I take my strap back, I don't wanna pop forward here. You wanna use your core to control that movement. And then we'll take that back down. We'll go again and we'll take it up. Stop where you need to stop, maybe a little bit more. Maybe you would be a little bit more comfortable if you reached out a little bit longer on each side of that strap. We want the arms to be long here. And then we'll take that back up. Good, now from here, you choose where you wanna stop. You can keep it gentle, or you can try to take it all the way back to the tops of the hips or the back of the floor. And I'm just gonna move forward and back. I'm drawing up from the pubic bone behind the navel. If you cannot get your arms back behind you without long arms, take a wider grip on your strap. And then from here, when you're ready, find your sweet spot, which might not be your fullest range of motion. For me, that's about right here. Good, and then we'll take it back up. Good, so I'm just gonna come back here. I'm going to choke up a little bit here. We're going to come into a side bend and an open. One of my favorite stretches. Coming all the way up, big inhale. I'm pulling on this strap. I'm going to go over to my left. I'm going to let my left hand travel down to the floor. I've still got tautness in my strap here, drawing up and in. And I'm going to open behind me, getting that nice stretch in the bicep, the armpit area, maybe the upper chest. Inhale, exhale. And as I come forward, I'm gonna see curve my spine, forehead in the direction of the knee, but not touching. Your strap will not be um, tight here. If this is not for you, just take a basic side bend. And when you're ready, we're gonna open and use your obliques, your side abs to come to center. Good, taking that down, readjust your grip. Inhale, reach and lengthen. Exhale, taking that over to the right side now, just letting the right hand travel down to the floor. And when you're ready, we're just gonna open towards the ceiling on the side, finding that nice bicep, armpit area, upper chest stretch, maybe even a little bit into the next stretch. I feel that a little bit on this side. And then when you're ready, inhale, exhale, you can stay here, you can continue to move, belly button into the spine, nice little C curve roll. Good. Inhale and lengthen, exhale, coming back up. Good, I'm gonna put this to the side. We may or may not come back to it later on, so we'll just keep it close. And from here, just kind of wiggle, 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 and we're gonna go right into our first pose. So let's open up here with a nice child's pose. I'm just gonna move my blanket out of the way. So remember in this child's pose, you can have knees closer together. You can take them as wide as the mat or somewhere in between, you choose. If you need to fill in space here, maybe you're really tight. You can put a folded blanket, a pillow or cushion under there. I'm gonna come into an extended child's pose version. So I'm taking my arms long in front of me. If your shoulders don't like that, take your hands back by the ankles and just let the shoulders release here. And I will get my trusty timer going here as well. Good. So we're gonna try and be here for about two and a half minutes. Good. 
Breathe and expand. And come back to balance or whatever your intention was. So we often talk about balance and yoga as standing on one foot maybe or a sidearm balance or something like that. But where can you be where you're balanced in the pose Balanced in the breath, balanced in the mind. And notice as the body moves more towards that balance, do you feel the need to sink deeper into where you are? Now this is a bit of a hip opener here as well. So if you start to feel any pain, numbness, tingling, burning anywhere, not necessarily the hips, but that could also be the knees, um, anything like that, back off until you do not. And we've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Good. From here, carefully, if you've got any props or support underneath you, move those out of the way. We're going to come forward, belly down here, and just maybe find a little recovery position. So maybe make a little pillow with the hands. And just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle here for a moment. Crocodile pose. So you don't have to wiggle the hips, but my back often feels a lot better when I do that after um, being in a pose for a while. So just know it's an option. Good. And then from here, when you're ready, hands will come under the shoulders and we're gonna press back. Good. Now I'm gonna set myself up here. Now we're gonna sit back on the toes. So again, this is another place to have um, some blocks or at least one block here for balance if you needed that. So I'm just gonna kind of come back here. Good. So I'm gonna recommend, especially if you're newer, about a wider base of support. So think about the toes, the ankles, the hips and the knees, all tracking in this direction. Okay, so try not to let the ankles kind of fall out to the side or fall inward. So you've got blocks here to help with that. The closer you take your feet, legs and knees together, the more challenge you'll have. I'm just gonna bring my blocks here a little bit on the side. I'm gonna try to find a little bit of length. We won't be here too long. So hands or fingertips can be on your blocks. You can always challenge yourself coming to prayer. The purpose of this pose is to get into the fascia of the feet but it also works the mind where you are in space. Good. And we'll take 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. With a smile, you can use your blocks or your hands to come forward for a moment. Lean forward, just use that as an assistance and just kind of get out of there for a moment. So I like the nice little stretch down the back of the legs um, when I release out of that one. Good, now from here, you can use the blocks to help you. We're gonna come back down. I'm gonna put these to the side for a moment. We'll come back to those with camel. And I'm gonna come back onto the belly. Good. 
And we're going to go into a sphinx or a seal pose. So sphinx, elbows are under the shoulders, forearms are grounded, hands can be down. Some people like to clasp, that's going to be up to you. You're lengthen, lengthen, lengthen through the low body. Belly button is in towards the spine. Your pubic bone is into the mat. You're going to press away and you're going to find that little extension lift. I like to shine my heart forward here a little bit, just like you would if you were doing cat cows and you're going into the cow pose. So this is fine, as long as there's no crunching or funny business happening in the back. And if there is, you're up too high. If you wanna go into something a little bit deeper here, you can do a seal variation. So arms don't have to be long. You can lift a little bit. You can lift a lot. Same thing, no, no crunching of the spine. I'm gonna be gentle. And I'm going to come to Sphinx today. Good. And then from here, when you've chosen where you want to be, and you remember, you can always fill in the space here. We're going to try to be here for a juicy three minutes. Good. So remember, this is active. So you don't want to hang in the shoulders like this. You don't want to hang in the low back and collapse to the chest. You want to find that length. Find that core engagement to support that spine. And always know you can come out of here at any time. Crocodile will be the recovery pose here. Good. So again, coming back to balance, where could you soften? If you're tightening up throughout your body, you're not in balance. Maybe doing some little neck rolls or something here would help you be a little bit more at ease. We're almost halfway there. Can you still expand that rib cage? Less than a minute. Getting a little bit harder now, but we're almost there. But if it's a better idea for you to come out of here early, come out early. Remember your body is your best teacher. In five, four, three, two, and one. Carefully, carefully, carefully come out of this extension. You can crocodile a little bit here. Good. And then from here, I'm going to take hands under my shoulders and I'm going to press back for a child's pose. It does not have to be as deep as the one we did a moment ago. Just a little bit of countering to that deeper extension. Good. We're going to begin to get a little bit deeper into the hips now. So we're, we'll start that with dragon. So I will start from all fours. I'm going to start by taking my 
right foot forward. You can always pick it up and put it there. Good. So before we even start here, my hands are gonna come on the inside of my right foot. And then I'm gonna tuck my left toe here and I'm gonna lift that knee and take that knee a little bit more behind the hip, be a little bit more comfortable to the kneecap. And then you can choose, you can stay right here. You can take your right foot out a little bit wider, but still facing parallel. You can go into an external rotation, hip, knee and toe turning out away. Forearms can come to the ground, a block, a pillow. You can roll onto the side. I'm gonna give you the side roll option about halfway through. We're gonna try to be here, maybe, for about three minutes. Now, as you're here, if the back leg wants to slide back a little bit more and it's safe for you to do so, you're welcome to do that. Just remember, you wanna go to about between 80 and 90%. So you don't wanna take yourself to your full flexibility right off the bat. So again, where can you find that balance? Could you draw up from the pubic bone and behind the navel, belly button into the spine just a little bit more? Could you expand that rib cage a little bit wider when you inhale? And then maybe decide, are you gonna roll onto the edge of this foot now, maybe making some other adjustments in the body? Or are you gonna stay where you are? We're about halfway there. So in this one, I like to kind of sway my hips a little bit here when I go onto the side of the foot. So if that would feel good to you, you're welcome to take that as well. Get about 30 more seconds. Stay with the breath, find your balance. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Good. So from here, I'm going to take my hands back up. I'm going to take my foot down. I'm going to heel toe, heel toe that foot back in. Good. Just for a moment, I'm going to slide back here and just counter that. And then from here, we're going to go right into pigeon pose on the side. So I'm just going to heel toe, keep heel toeing this foot over. So think about a little bit of a square in the hip. So that just means my right hip is going to come back a little bit. My left hip is gonna come forward a little bit. Your right heel is gonna come closer to the hip crease. It does not have to touch it. And remember in this one, a floating joint is a risky joint. So if you've got a lot of space under this right hip, you can fill that in with a blanket or a cushion, something like that. If you're, that's just not gonna happen for you today, then I want you to kind of come onto your back here and cross your right ankle over the left knee and pull in. Exact same hip rotation, it's kinder to the joint. 
So from here, when you're ready, we're going to go here, try to be for three minutes. Now I'm pretty tight today, so I'm actually going to bring in my bolster cushion for this one. Get my hips situated here. And so we've talked a little bit about balance in our postures, balance in the breath. Where could you find a little bit more balance in your home life? I'm just gonna leave you there to ponder that because everybody's got different things going on and that's gonna look very different for different people. We're halfway there. Final minute, breathe and expand. Notice if anything else is kind of going on. So for me, I've got a lot built up here. I know that because even though I shouldn't be, I am building up a lot of heat just being here. And usually signals to me the beginning of emotional release getting ready to happen. So sometimes the face will tense up and the eyes will water, that's okay. And five. Four, three, two, and one. So from here, if you're on your back, carefully roll over to your side and come to a seat. If you went belly down, carefully come up. If you used a prop, you can move that out of the way. Good, I'm just gonna kind of you know, move to my right side, swing around that left leg and come back up here. I'm gonna take my right leg back for a moment and just extend it. Good. So my right side feels like a big noodle. So we'll see if we can get into the left side like that as well. So starting with dragon. So remember dragon, we're gonna take the left foot forward now, okay? I'm gonna tuck my back toe and lift and shift that knee back a little bit more behind the hip. My hands are on the inside of my left foot. You can stay here. You can take that leg out a little bit wider. You can move it into that external rotation, hip, knee, and toe, turn out away from the body. You can come down onto a prop with the forearms or the floor. Good, find yours for three minutes. I will try. Good, so again, remember that 80 to 90%. You don't wanna come into your full flexibility right off the start. I'm pressing my floor away with my shoulders and I still have that core nice and engaged.
So I apologize, my left ear pod does not want to stay in my left ear. As we start to come up on the halfway point, notice here if you need to come out, if you need to make any changes, if you want to roll onto the edge of that left foot. So when I do that, I kind of take my body a little bit more towards center. And then maybe if you want to, you can rock a little bit. Just an option, not a requirement. But check in elsewhere. And check in with that breath. And check in with the lower body. Is the core still engaged? Belly button in. Do you need to come out of something? Less than a minute left. So balance in yoga poses, balance at home. As we work outside the home, could you find a little bit more balance with your work life? Or maybe that means retirement life for some of us. Or volunteer life. And when you're ready, carefully, carefully, and we'll come up if you went down. We'll bring that foot and leg back in. If you took it out wider and just for a moment, sink back. Let's get a little counter stretch here. Maybe lengthen that spine just a little bit. And when you're ready, we're gonna go into pigeon on this side. So I'm gonna rock forward. I'm gonna take my hands down. I'm gonna heel toe, heel toe it over. So just like the other side. Now, just like the other side, if you're really tight on this left side and you can't get good support by putting props or something underneath that left hip, come onto your back. You'll cross your left ankle over your right knee and pull in. Otherwise, set yourself up for success for belly down. So right hip's gonna come forward a little bit. Left hip's gonna come back just a smidge. And maybe this heel is closer to the hip crease, but not touching. You can be up or you can come down. So I'm a little bit more open on this side today. So I'm not gonna bring my bolster back in here. But we'll try to be in this pigeon pose for another three minutes. Breathing and expanding. Again, notice what's happening in the body as it's trying to achieve balance. Is it telling you you need to come out of here in order to achieve balance? Sometimes that's okay. Is it trying to tell you to take slower, deeper breaths? Drawing up from the pubic bone to behind the navel or belly button into the spine. Softening somewhere. Good, we're halfway there.
Once again, as a reminder, any pain, numbness, tingling, burning, you can't breathe well, finding that balance, then back off until you don't feel those sensations or the breath can, be, that can become normal again and get my words out. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Good. So those of you that went on to your back, carefully roll over to your side. We'll come back up. Those of us that went belly down, carefully coming up, moving any props out of the way if you use that. I'm just going to kind of swing this back knee forward. I'm going to come back up onto my knees and all forward. And I'm just going to stretch that left foot back. The whole left leg back. Good. And then from here, when you're ready, we're going to come up and we're going to prepare for our camel pose. So this is the one, and I'll give you a couple of different options here. I'm gonna bring blocks back in for one of those modifications. So I'm gonna come up here. If you need knee cushion, you can, and actually, I believe I will do that. So I'm gonna bring this blanket in here. Good. How thick you have your blanket is 100% dependent on your personal needs. Yes, my knees feel much happier right there. So I'm going to try to take my hip bones and knees in this alignment. Ideally, I want my feet and the knees to be in this alignment as well. So they don't need to touch here, kind of come out to the side and doing funky things. You do want to try and keep your hips over your knees. So a lot of people come back here, try to think about being more forward when in doubt, because that's probably where you're going to need to go. So I've got this, I'm drawing up and in. My hands are coming to behind my hips. You can have your fingers doing what they need to do. Rolling shoulders back, shining my heart forward, and maybe looking up to the ceiling. Some of us need to look straight forward. So this is one modification. And if you're a beginner, this is where I suggest that you go. Some of us are gonna tuck the toes so you don't have as far back to reach. And maybe you can grab ankles or heels. Good. Pressing the hips forward again, rolling the shoulders back, finding your camel. So that's your full camel. I'm going to nod my chin and come out of here to show you another modification for camel. You can take blocks here. Okay, so right along where you would um, have your hands. And that might be a better camel for you. So again, rolling the shoulders back, drawing up from the front body. Hips are going to come a little bit more forward taking hands to blocks, whoops, maybe, and then coming into your camel from here. So this is actually, I'm gonna take my fist here. The blocks always don't like to be stable on blankets, so be mindful of where you're taking it. Good, I'm gonna come back up and be right here. We're gonna be here for two minutes. You know, always engage the front body when you're bending through the back body. This is still a back bend, obviously, so you don't want to crunch. We're about halfway. So I'm just going to move my block out of the way here, and I'm going to come to my ankles, coming into full camel. You do not have to come into full camel if your body's not ready for that yet.
So from here, remember, as you make your way out of your camel, nod your chin first, support yourself as you come up, keeping front body engaged. We're gonna take those hips back, find a child's pose. We're gonna be in this child's pose for a full one minute. And when you're ready, we'll carefully come up out of there. Great. We're going to come onto our backs now. So if you need to kind of clear your space just a little bit here, you can do that. I'm going to make sure that my bolster cushion is fairly close because I'm going to bring that in for Shavasana. And I'm going to move this extra blanket out of the way here. So as we begin to come down, we're gonna find ourselves in a little bit of a twisty here. Good. And so what I'm gonna do, I've got my knees bent. I'm kind of doing a wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and letting my body settle in. Once you feel settled and a little bit at ease, knees are bent, press your weight into your feet, lift the hips, shift your hips over to your left. I'm gonna pick up my left leg. I'm gonna cross that left thigh over the right thigh. Arms might come out to the side and then I'm gonna let those knees drop to the right. Maybe looking to the left. Hopefully my left earbud won't fall out of here. And we're gonna be here. We've got the time. Let's be here for three minutes today. Breathe and expand. Now, if at any time you're feeling pressure or something funny happen at your knees, you can always just undo those legs and just let the knees be here. That's also a different kind of twist. Or if you need to come out, then just come out. Good. So as we kind of come into the end of the practice, we talked about balance in the poses, in the body, in the home, maybe our work or retirement, volunteer life. What about balance into the greater environment, your community, the state, the nation, the world? The universe.
and ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. We'll take the head back to center. Now, if you're really strong in the core, you can keep your legs why they uh, where they are and bring them back to center, or you can follow me kind of uncrossing and then taking legs back to center. You can also take a leg, one leg at a time coming back to center. So press, once you're back in the center, press your feet into the mat, shift the hips back to center, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle here for a moment, lift the spine, the hips, everything just kind of re-come back here, reset itself. And then when you're ready, we'll take that all to the other side. So, bringing my time, trusty timer over here, pressing into the feet, lifting the hips, shifting the hips over to the right, crossing your right thigh over the left thigh, letting the knees fall towards the left, maybe looking towards the right, three minutes. Breathing and expanding. As we think about balance and our greater community, the universe, we might think, well, what could I, one person do to help bring that back into a more positive balance? Well, you're already doing something, you're practicing yoga. Many of you have been with me for years, even before I went online and have been very faithful and very appreciative of that every single week coming or doing classes and watching videos. There's positive reasons as to why you're doing that to bring things into balance or you wouldn't be here. Notice how you feel after that yoga or even a Pilates practice. Do you take that positivity out into the world and potentially spread that to someone else who then might take that positivity and kind gesture to someone else and so on. or a random act of kindness when you're out and about somewhere. Maybe it's as simple or um, silly as just not feeding trolls online. You see a negative, silly comment, maybe just keep scrolling and go on to something else and not feed into that negativity or whatever ridiculous comment that that person had made. Then other people hopefully won't jump on the negativity bandwagon. Turn to your breath. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Head will come back to center. If your legs are still crossed, you can uncross them if you need to to come back to center, or you can keep them where they are using your abs a little bit more to bring them back into center. And once your feet are back on the ground, press into the feet, take the hips back to center and let yourself just get a wiggle, wiggle, wiggle here, letting the spine, letting the hips come back into balance. And from here, we're gonna go right into our Shavasana. So my bolster is down here. I'm just gonna use my feet to kind of pull that into place for me. 
So if you haven't tried it, um, a cushion, a folded blanket, a pillow, something like that under your thighs can be a great way for the low back and the um, hip flexors to release. So your tailbone and your bottom is still on the ground. You're just taking it underneath the thighs. So feel free to bring in any other prop here that you may want or need to be comfortable. See where you go from there. If you can make yourself about 10% more comfortable. And I will leave you here for a few moments. And focus on balance or your own intention. Begin to take some deeper breaths here. Choose stillness or gently take head and neck from side to side. Choose stillness or maybe invite movement of the fingers and the toes. Choose stillness, or maybe bring in your knees to the chest, choosing to keep the upper body lower, or maybe you wanna lift it up, giving yourself a nice full body hug. And choosing stillness, or maybe moving any props out of the way if you use them for Shavasana time today. Taking arms long behind you, legs long in front of you, and maybe reach and lengthen from the edge of the fingertips, the edge of the toes, full body stretch, point and flex through the feet, bend and stretch through the hands, twirling wrists and ankles in one direction, and then in the other. And then whenever you're ready, Carefully bending in both knees. And you choose rolling over onto your right or left side, the side that works best for your body in this moment. Maybe contemplating that practice. And then when you're ready, pressing yourself up to another comfortable seat. Maybe the same one you started with, maybe a different one. I'm gonna bring my blanket back in here. 
Good. Finding that nice tall spine, ear, shoulders, and hips. Noticing how you feel now versus when we first started. Fingertips to the side, palms turning up. Inhale, reach, 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 and lengthen nice and tall. Touching palms together. Exhale, hands in the heart center. Reconnecting with that intention at the beginning of class. Balance the one that I gave you or your own that you chose. We'll take our thumbs to our forehead for good and true thoughts. To our lips for good and kind words. And to our hearts for open and loving hearts. Knowing no effort on this mat is ever wasted. No gain is ever reversed. May you be safe. May you stay well. May you be more balanced. Have a wonderful rest of the day or week ahead. Namaste.